I remember when we were shooting the miniseries of Battlestar and the being in this ship was hell on earth. It's so hot. If it's if it's 80 degrees outside, it's 85 degrees on the stage. And then inside that flight suit, it's 90. And then you put yourself in a cockpit and you're now at 95 degrees and you're in there for an hour or two hours. And it gets really hot and you can't drink water because you will have to go to the bathroom and you've got the helmet on that's plugged in and you've got the suit on that's zipped all the way up and then you've got the belt on that's hooked into the helmet that's hooked into the seat and you're you know you've got the five-point harness on it takes 20 minutes to get out and well maybe 10 minutes to get out 20 minutes to get back in so you can't drink water so you're getting hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and there's really nothing you can do and um, I couldn't remember my dialogue. And I had to say, we've got violent decompressions irradiating from the port flight pod. And I couldn't say it. For the life of me, I couldn't say it. Michael Reimer was ready to kill me. I mean, they were like, we've hired the wrong girl. She can't memorize her dialogue. It's crazy. I still, I have nightmares about we have violent decompressions irradiating from the port flight pod. Because I, I can say it all the time now. And I couldn't say it because I was so hot and I was so stressed out. And what I realized then is that you just kind of, you have to take that, that, be, that, that sense of uncomfortableness um, and, and use it because that is what the pilots would feel like. And so once I started to realize all of that and actually use it, it made it easier. But I just remember when I had to scream and tell Lee to hold on and we were crashing into the deck, I was like, Everyone is going to make fun of me till I die if this does not look good. <laughs> um, and so I, I, you have to go full out. And in the Viper, you had to really pretend. It was like, it was like when you're five years old and you're sitting in a cardboard box, and to you, it's a race car, and you're taking that cardboard box everywhere with you, and you have more fun in that cardboard box than any toy your parents could have ever bought you. That's what the Viper is. Is that it's, it's, it's a, a cardboard box for adults. And you have to sit in it and really believe that you're in a plane. And it is really difficult, actually. <laughs> so parts of it were cardboard. I, I don't think they were cardboard. I think they were something else. But they were, you couldn't step on the wing. You couldn't step on anything. Because if you stepped on it, it would break off. So you know, the Viper was, I think that this much of the Viper was real on ours. And the rest were, you know, we had one that was full that you could touch and stand on and things. But the rest of them were just soft little models that you could break if you hit them too hard. And it looks so much like the real thing, which is crazy. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. It's really just, I'm, a, I'm astounded by the whole thing. It's awesome. If we turn it on, <laughs> I'm like a little kid. Um, you, have, you have the thrusters in the back, which I don't know if you can see them. Look at that. It's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. And then in the, in the inside, if you if you look inside, and this is when I said that this brings back bad memories, because if you look inside, you can actually see the computer, and it looks the exact same way that it did on the show when minus the little Cylon blips. There's no little Cylon blips on there, but which is probably a good thing. <laughs> but there's um it's absolutely amazing. And the harness is there, that harness that absolutely drove me insane because I was so small I didn't actually fit in the seat. So they had to pile blankets underneath me and then the seatbelt wouldn't fit and then they'd shove the seatbelt down on top of me and it was it was a nightmare. And your helmet would actually hit this back part because we had all our walkie talkies and our battery powers and everything hooked onto the back of our helmets and they'd smack into this in the back and so your head would be like this and you'd be trying to keep your helmet up and it wouldn't stay up and it's um it's bringing back all those memories all those things that i've blocked out <laughs> but it's just amazing and it it actually says captain kara thrace which um um i don't remember if i ended as a captain or if I, I think I died as a captain and then they, they demoted me like five million times. Um, I don't know if that was the first time she was in jail or after she died and everyone thought she was a Cylon, I don't remember. But this is, I mean, it's just, 
It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I can't get over it. The only thing it's missing is an alarm clock. So you could <laughs> actually, you could make it your alarm clock, but if that was the case, I would hit it every morning and I'd break it cause, or throw it across the room as I do with my alarm clock now. So this is, this is really cool. And the seat belts, you guys, I wish you could see this. The little seat belts actually look like seat belts. Like they're, they're teeny, teeny, tiny seat belts. It's amazing. Look close enough, and I don't know if they did this on purpose, but my ass imprint is actually on the seat, um, as if Kara had been sitting in there for three hours, as I normally was. But there is there's a little ass imprint, and I don't know if that was done on purpose. Yeah, that was intentional. Was it? Because uh -huh. they made it small, which is good. It didn't take up the whole seat, which is nice. <laughs> it's a nice touch. I think they took 10 pounds off my body. It's all right. <laughs> Things you'll bring it back here. When you take this off, kind of slide it off to make it look like if it's connected. You can actually just lift it off, but okay. you can just go like this, put it down, and then when you put it back, this on, is a like prototype. That. The final one actually it clicks, in. It clicks okay. in and does the whole okay. thing. And then you can turn it on, and you can actually pick this thing up. Once you put it down, you can actually pick up the thing. It's got a wire, it's connected but, yeah, in the bottom. but you can just like you know work with it once you start to talk about it and go into it a little bit because okay. it's, it's such a stunning piece of art and we're really we're looking at this as a piece of art okay not as a model so much as, as the artistic endeavor of what it stands for so you don't want me to call it a toy kit you can <laughs> <laughs> you can call anything you, you know, want honestly you could call it Gertrude we don't care <laughs> oh my god I should have named my plane Gertrude on Battlestar that would have been fantastic so, well why don't you tell him so the real name of, the, of my ship was not people was don't know not this not yes Miko. it's really Gertrude her name was Gertrude <laughs>